In today's ThingScript tutorial, I'll show you how you can plot a daily time frame indicator on an intraday time frame chart. One example of what I mean by this is if you were to take a 50 day simple moving average off of your daily time frame, we can plot that same value on a 5 minute chart which allows you to play reactions to and from some of these key levels. Now let me show you an example of why this would be useful in the first place. Here's a recent chart of Coke, and what we can see here is we have stacked moving averages across the board. You can see the top line here is the 8 period exponential, then the 21 exponential, then the 34 exponential, and this yellow dashed line is the 50 SMA, and the white dashed line right down here is the 200 SMA. Now the thing I find sort of interesting about the chart of Coke, and of course hindsight is 2020, but it's the actual breach or the test of that 50 day simple moving average. When that happened, we really saw just a wick touch. That wick touch also happened to overlap with the 50 SMA almost to a dime very perfectly there before we saw a bit of a reaction here. So the question is, can we see moments like this intraday setting up and can we actually take advantage of those particular setups? Now, if I come into what this indicator would look like on an intraday time frame chart, here's what we have. So the cyan line right down here is that same 50 SMA value. This is from that same day, this is February 14th. And we can see when price bounced into that 50 SMA on the daily time frame, we see that level right down here, how price reacted. We had a bit of a base forming. We then had one and two oversold indications with the edge signals indicator. And then we had a nice bounce up from there. Now it doesn't always look this clean, but the overall idea is these levels typically tend to have some key reactions taking place wherever they do take place. This could be powered by either algos, institutions, whatever it may be, but the overall idea is we'd like to find these sorts of zones and take advantage of that. For that to happen, we need to be able to see these levels on an intraday time frame chart, which makes it just easier and cleaner instead of needing to go back and forth between a daily and a five minute time frame chart in this particular example. Now let's move on to writing this actual code out, and you'll see it's very, very simple to essentially reference a daily time frame indicator on an intraday time frame chart. Now here I have our thinkorswim charts. This is that same setup. I'll show you one last time. Feb 14th is the day where the 50 SMA was triggered. So let's go ahead and create this. First of all, if I switch simply to a five minute time frame chart here, we'll see that 50 period SMA is now being calculated off of the five minute candles values. That's not what we want. So let's come back to our daily time frame chart here. I'll click the studies icon so we can write some new code and click create. Now inside of this, this is just going to be a sample. So I'll give this something like a TI intraday SMA 50 example, just to be able to write this code out. Now the way we define a normal moving average, or in this case a normal 50 SMA, is by doing the following. We can say something like plot SMA 50 is equal to, call the simple moving average function inside of thinkorswim, and we set this equal to our closing price and going back for a length of 50 bars. This is typically how we define a simple moving average using ThingScript. Now to change this instead to have a reference to the daily time frame, we need the closing price to instead of the current time frames chart be referencing a daily time frames chart. So the way we do that is by saying close and we can now give this a new parameter. The parameter that close would take here is the aggregation period. So here we can say something like period is equal to aggregation period dot day. And just like that, you'll see once we click OK, this compiles. But before I click OK, I'd like to show you all of the different aggregation periods that are available. So if I bring in this link, this is from the thinkorswim thingscript documentation. There we search for aggregation period, and these are all of the different choices you have available. So if you wanted something like a weekly 50 SMA, you could do the same thing. If you wanted to go away from the SMA and plot some completely different line, you could do that as well. As long as it takes either a closing price or volume as one parameter into your indicator, you can then reference which aggregation period you'd like it to actually be calculating from. So once I click OK here, this has added that onto our charts. If I click apply, what we should see on the daily time frame is this yellow line right here now has an overlapping solid line over it, which is this indicator's line. And it should be the cyan color since that's the default color. So let's test and see if that's what happens. I'll click apply. 
We can see that 50SMA also now has a cyan line overlapping it, meaning this code is working as we would expect. Now let's test this on that same five minute intraday time frame chart. And if I zoom out here, what we can see is that 50SMA is plotting with the value that it is for that particular day. Now the time we were looking at in question was Feb 14th. This is also Feb 14th and that breach when price actually hits the 50 SMA was right around 8, 10 AM Pacific. And that's when we saw the reaction coming in from Coke where buyers stepped in or algos, whatever it is, bringing price action up uh, off of that bounce on the 50 SMA inside of Coke. So hopefully this tutorial gives you an idea of how you can very easily reference a daily time frames indicator study, whatever that is, we use the simple moving average as an example. You can use the exponential moving average. You can use completely other random indicators, things like the market pulse, whatever it is, and plot that on an intraday time frame chart to get a sense of where price is likely to have some sort of a reaction from, and then use your favorite overbought, oversold indicator, to try and actually confirm moves into and away from those key levels. All right, hope this quick but hopefully effective ThinkScript tutorial is helpful for those of you looking to day trade in these volatile markets. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading.